Now, modern gas masks are very expensive and some people may question whether or not this is an overrated preparedness tool. Today, we're gonna to talk about 10 uses for a gas mask and whether or not it's a worthwhile investment. Let's get to it. Like any type of survival related equipment, gas masks are only effective if you use them properly. This means ensuring that they are a good fit and are airtight, choosing the proper filters and knowing when your filters have expired. The fact is, when used properly, gas masks can absolutely minimize your suffering or save your life. Whether or not it's going to be a worthwhile investment for you is going to depend on your budget and what situations you're preparing for. Let's talk about 10 different uses for a gas mask. The first use for a gas mask is for biological threats. Gas masks will provide some of the highest levels of protection against the ingestion of biological particles. P3 filters, for instance, will offer real protection against airborne viruses as many will filter down to a micron level which cannot be penetrated by the particles that these viruses will piggyback on to get into your respiratory pathway. The only downside is if you are wearing a gas mask and you do happen to be infected with something, these masks are typically not filtering out the exhaled air. The reason why there's an unfiltered exhalation valve is to make breathing manageable. Breathing through a gas mask is already going to be laborious enough without having to endure the stress of exhaling through another layer of filter. Now based on conventional standards, this can be mitigated by simply putting a tried and true holy grail of facial protection over the exhalation valve, aka any skimpy old piece of cloth that you find on the street. Just kidding. But seriously though, next to full-blown self-contained breathing apparatuses, Devices like a gas mask are as good as it gets. People who work in level 4 laboratories don't wear self-contained breathing apparatus suits just to look cool. These suits absolutely do work. When it comes to surviving a real zombie apocalypse and actually protecting yourself, a real gas mask is the way to go. Forest Fires with 2020 being a landslide forest fire season in California and a trend towards larger conflagrations of the sort the world over, having protection against forest fires is a reality for anyone who lives in a forested region, especially one that is remote where seconds and minutes may count. Imagine if you had to drive through the blazing inferno experienced by Fort McMurray residents in 2016. If you got caught in your vehicle in a traffic jam while trying to evacuate, you could die from smoke inhalation in a matter of minutes. You can also get neurological damage from carbon monoxide inhalation. A gas mask with a proper P3 filtration and carbon monoxide filtration may offer protection in this type of scenario. But as with all of these scenarios that we're going to discuss, gas masks should not provide you with a false sense of confidence. They are primarily for the purpose of evacuation, and they should not embolden you to put yourself in dangerous situations. Another situation often referenced in movies is volcanic ash. If you live in a region that experiences frequent volcanic eruptions, or if you're anywhere within a few thousand miles from the Yellowstone supervolcano, which is probably most of you listening right now, those who don't have a mask in this type of situation are going to have their lungs caked with ash that's going to be the equivalent of having cement in your lungs. Not a good way to go. I personally would rather last long enough to see Mad Max, but that's just me. It should be known that if the Yellowstone caldera ever actually erupted, you would need a whole lot of gas mask filters to see you through. Chances are life would become so unlivable for other reasons that you might just opt to take the gas mask off yourself. But here as survivalists and preppers, we are in this till the bitter end. Next is riots and tear gas. Not that you should ever partake in a mob because of course you are a law-abiding citizen, but the mob may come to you. And where there are mobs, tear gas follows. Riot police don't just wear gas masks to look scary or cool. Tear gas and pepper spray are debilitating, and a gas mask with a P3 filter offers protection against this. In addition, a multi-purpose filter will protect against any toxic vapors that are emitted from the mass arson that usually accompanies most modern riots. On a more practical note, protection against the evacuation from a building fire, be it residential, commercial, or industrial, are probably one of the best uses for a gas mask or a smoke hood. If you are one of the majority of people who works in office towers, or one of the unlucky people that happens to find themselves in the 100,000 plus 
commercial fires every year in North America, having a gas mask is not a bad idea. After all, smoke inhalation is one of the most common causes of death in house fires. Now imagine there's a blaze in your home and one of your family members, maybe a child, is in need of rescue. Having a gas mask with the proper filter might afford you more options for making your move when seconds may count. Even when oxygen levels are moderately compromised, you can have impaired judgment and coordination which may affect your abilities in an emergency. As previously indicated, most P3 filters are going to filter out smoke but some specialized cartridges are even going to filter out carbon monoxide. These typically have a very limited lifespan. They're a little bit bigger, but they do work. Another problem is that a lot of these synthetic materials that are used in residential and office construction nowadays emit extremely dangerous substances when they're burned. These toxic gases may imperil somebody who is trying to escape a burning building. Just be mindful of the fact that some gas masks and smoke hoods are going to limit your visibility. So knowing your surroundings and knowing your fire escape plan is as important as any personal protective equipment in this type of scenario. Perhaps the most iconic, but ironically least likely use for a gas mask is protecting against fallout from a nuclear blast. A gas mask and many other types of PPE will provide some protection from the ingestion of alpha and beta particles emitted in nuclear fallout. However, and this needs to be emphasized, a gas mask will not, and I say will not protect you from gamma radiation from a nuclear disaster. Your main goal should be seeking shelter and not roaming around in a radiated landscape hunting cats with your gas mask on like Denzel Washington in the Book of Eli. To be very kosher about it, your gas mask should be NBC or CBRN approved. However, as previously indicated, there are a variety of other methods of preventing the ingestion of alpha and beta particles. I'm not going to go into great depth about that here, but I would encourage you to do more independent research on the topic. Just like a nuclear bomb, the main hazardous effects of a dirty bomb are going to be in the initial blast and thus the protection against the ingestion of radiological contaminants. It will not prevent you from exposure to gamma radiation. The only true protection against that is going underground or having a house made of lead. With all of these scenarios though, the goal is to get as far away from the blast zone as possible and decontaminate once you arrive at your destination. But yet again, a dirty bomb is another scenario where a gas mask may be somewhat useful part of the time. Now gas masks were designed for the purpose of protecting against chemical attacks in World War I. If properly fitted with a tight seal and with the right filters, these masks will be effective in keeping you alive long enough to evacuate an area which was exposed to a chemical attack. Sometimes however this might require a full hazmat suit something we're not going to talk about in this video, but each one of these situations is unique and you would want to do more research on the specific type of chemical that you're trying to protect against. The problem arises in the average person's lack of training or know-how, but in the internet age, there is no shortage of resources that are going to cover the basics of how to properly use your personal protective equipment. Another use is going to be dust. In the post-apocalyptic irradiated wasteland or just in the middle of the desert, a dust storm might be a problem. A simple dust mask might suffice in this situation, but the benefit of a full face respirator is the protection of your entire face. Another more practical use is household industrial or agricultural applications. So things like protecting from hazardous fumes when painting, doing demolitions or clearing out a moldy building, spraying chemicals and nauseous vapors, even spraying pesticides and herbicides, or just changing the baby's diapers for the first time. I've used my gas masks on countless occasions just for household use, and this is also good training if you ever had to use it in an emergency. Now gas masks will also protect against pollution. And while this may seem overkill, if a person has respiratory issues and you are traversing a very heavily polluted environment which could result in acute sickness, then it may be effective towards that end. However, it will likely be impractical to use a full face respirator just to protect yourself against pollution or environmental toxins. And the situation would have to be pretty bad to warrant it. But nonetheless, a proper multi-purpose filter may have some positive effect in this type of situation. And last but not least, a gas mask will always serve a good use as a Halloween costume. 
Let me know what your thoughts are about this in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for real prepping and survival advice on this channel. We're putting out three videos a week and we're not stopping until the bubbles pop in. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.